Now this video, this video right here, I'm a little excited about. So we all know that Sony is releasing a bunch of cameras each year. And for a while, well, the a7 III has been out for a couple years. And all the other cameras down the line have got their upgrades, they've got their newer models, but not the a7 III. So my prediction with all the rumors going around is that this fall we're going to get the a7 IV. Now, I'm really excited about that because me, I shoot with the a7 R3. And the only reason I haven't gone to the a7R 4 is because I don't need all those megapixels. Those file sizes are huge and it fills up your entire hard drive. Like you need like a NAS system in order to, you know, file manage. And for all the portrait shoots I do for a couple of hundred shots each, it's way, way too much. So I was considering selling the R3 and getting the A7C, which is a similar camera on the inside to the A7 III, but then I find out, well, not find out because it's not official, but the fact that there might be an A7 IV coming down the line this fall. So this video is basically my wish list for things that I think they should have on that A7R4. What I think they should have on that A7 for. There we go. <laughs> um, I mean, Sony, they, they have a ton of numbers and letters for all their cameras. It's, that's a whole other topic. So the first thing that I would love, 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 love to see on this camera is a size option. Even though it's a smaller megapixel count than the R series, which I'm currently using, Nikon does this thing where they have a large, a medium, and a small file size. So you can choose the amount of megapixels you want to use on your sensor in RAW, not just JPEG. Now, this would be an amazing feature to have on Sony cameras, so I hope you're listening. My first thing is I hope that, I hope, I'm pretty sure that they're going to release the a7 IV with like maybe 30, 32, maybe 36 megapixels as their full frame size, because I don't see them doing another 24 megapixels which is the a7 III, but I don't see them going higher than the a7 R3 or R4 because they don't want to take away sales from their R series. And same with the video features, which I'll get into that after because they don't want to take away from those sales as well. So the a7 III right now is basically like the entry level full frame camera. It has the best of all worlds. It has the best of photo, video. It's nice, it's a cool looking camera, it does it all. So for some video features that I would love to see on that camera, would have to be, first off, 10-bit 422 color. That's that's right off the bat. Um, 4K 60 and maybe 1080 240. Even though I don't really use the 240 on my FX3, because let's be honest, who uses 1080p anymore when everything's 4K? So that's one thing that I would love to see. Um, but, you know, like I said before with the photo, they don't want to take away from their flagships are their higher end models. So I doubt we're gonna see, you know, 124K or external raw or the full HDMI port. You're not gonna see any of that. It's still gonna be the base model, you know, because you know, the A7, the A7 III, the A7 IV, that's where it starts. You have those models and then from there you can graduate to either the R series for resolution, the S series for sensitivity and video, good for low light, or the A9 series, which is, you know, for speed, for sports. Or you could just, you know, throw it all in the basket and go for the A1 and just call it a day, right? <laughs> it's a little out of my price range though. Another thing I would love to see is a 15 stop dynamic range. We got that on the A1, we got it on the FX3. And let me tell you, even though I shoot some photos with the FX3 on that 12 megapixel sensor, it's beautiful. It's like the best, dynamic range I've seen on a camera in a long time. You could take a shot, a photo, or the video, for instance, and you have, that, especially if you're shooting an S-Live, S-Live 3, you get that nice detail in the highlights while maintaining it in the shadows. And I've never had that much control, and especially with the, you know, the 10-bit 422 color, 
you have so much control in post. So I got a little sidetracked a few minutes ago talking about like the base model of the A7 III and the A7 IV and what I would like to see with the file sizes. So as I was saying, you know, how Nikon did, you know, the large, medium, small, what I think, you know, should happen with the 30 to 34 or 36 megapixel A7 IV, I think they should have a large feature so you can use those 30 megapixels have a medium sensor where you can use say, you know, 24 if you still want to use 24, or the option if you want to shoot 12, you know, if that's what you want to do. And one thing I would really love to see is that improved menu system that you see on the A1 and the FX3 and the S A7S3. I think it's on the R4, I don't know, I don't remember. I never had the R4. But it's really quite innovative in the way they've done it. So you can go down this touchscreen menu. Actually, that's another thing, a touchscreen Please, 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 please. Because the touchscreen on the FX3, when you're doing photos and you're trying to preview them, you could swipe along the screen and, you know, just like on your iPhone. It is the coolest thing. And instead of having to touch the freaking dial every time you're trying to do it, you could swipe now and it is so smooth. And not to mention you could touch all the individual menus and any kind of buttons and whatever you're trying to touch. That needs to be on there. I don't know why it wasn't on the A7C with their newer release, but please put it on the A7III. But yes, that menu screen, the touch screen, and a fully articulating flip out screen. No tabletop nonsense. I'm tired of the tabletops, especially when you're a photographer. And if this is a photo, I mean, it's a base camera for full frame. Considering the fact that it's a photo camera too, you need that little, you know, flippy screen. So like if you're trying to shoot vertical and you're trying to like look down, you know, the tabletop is useless unless you're only doing landscape and you're putting it on the ground. No use for it at all. It just no, 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 no. Because the flippy screen is perfect for anybody that wants to vlog or film themselves. Like for instance, right now, I could see myself in the side of the camera. And I mean, I could see myself up on the monitor there too, but you know, if you want to get a monitor, that's cool. I love them, but that's not the case of this video. And finally, 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 one of the main reasons I wanted to do this video is because I had a thought. I was thinking, because I was at work the other day selling Sony cameras. And I had a thought. I was playing with the A7C, and I'm thinking there, sitting there thinking to myself, with the A7 IV coming out down the line, if this is even true, if this is even, you know, coming out, how cool would it be is if they came out with two versions of the A7 IV? A generic black model and a silver top model kind of like they did with the a7c because you know the a7c is flat it has that you know old school vintage vibe to it but the body of the a7 III feels a little bit more photo camera ish so if you have a silver top on that it would look so 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 pretty so that was my thought, and I think it would be an awesome thing to do. The, the camera's probably already in production, so if they didn't think of it, it's probably not gonna happen. I know you could get skins, but let's be honest, right out of the box, a silver top, A7 IV, that would look beautiful. Yeah, I would totally, I would totally rock it. And I know I said this before earlier in the video, but this is gonna be the base model for the full frame series for the Sony camera line. Um, I do not see them doing any of the advanced features like they have an A7S3 and the FX3 or the R4 or even things that they have in the A9 or the A1 because they don't want to take sales away from their higher end flagship models and I don't blame them. Um, but this camera I would say I'm going to take a rough estimate and predict that this camera is going to come in at around I want to say anywhere from 2300 to 2600 us that's my guess um but we'll see what happens we'll see if this camera even happens maybe it's not even a thing at all maybe i'm just making this video for no apparent reason hey it could happen so if you like this video hit that like button hit that subscribe button if you're not subscribed already and you know hit that little bell icon because you know it'll notify you whenever I put up a new video because, you know, YouTube decided to not inform everybody when, you know, you have a new video. So hit that like button, hit the subscribe button, leave a comment. What are your thoughts on the A7 IV? Do you think it's coming out? What are some features 
that you would love to see on the a7 IV. So until next time, I'll see you on the next video.